Welcome you to worship today. We are at Auburn First United Methodist Church today, and we welcome the folks from Colby United Methodist Church as well. I'm Pastor Sheila. And I'm Pastor Daniel. And we invite you to join us in our call to worship. Sing a new song. A song of love for all. Sing of the spirit of love. The spirit who loves us all. Sing of God's abiding love. That we might love one another and all the world. Sing a new song. A song of love for all. Please join us as we pray. Spirit of love, abide in us and in our worship. Whisper your song of love in our hearts that love may flow through every word we hear, every thought we think, every word we speak, and every song we sing. Spirit of power and grace, abide in us that we may abide in your love and proclaim your song of love for all. Amen.
Today's Gospel reading is from the book of John, 15, verses 19 through 17. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit and so that your fruit could last. As a result, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. The word of God for the people of God. Happy, what I like to call, Important Women Sunday. I have many women in my life that are not mothers but I want to make sure that I help them to feel important and loved on this special day. So to all of my mothers and others, um, when you honor someone on a day like today, it's always good to bring them flowers, right? Flowers are a really nice gift. I like to get them and um, they're good for special occasions. But up until recently, I didn't know, did you know that they have meanings? Oh my goodness. I was playing um, a scavenger hunt game over the summer on an app called Goose Chase uh, with the Seattle Shakespeare Company and they were talking about the meaning of flowers and plants. And so I learned that I can say a lot with flowers. I think there's a saying that goes along with that or something, maybe. So I thought we'd go out to my yard and take a look and see what's out there and what we can say with those flowers. So let's go. This plant right here, this is called a honeysuckle. Honeysuckle is known for its beautiful fragrance. This particular plant, if you wanted to put it in a bouquet, means pure happiness, sweetness, and affection. What a perfect flower for a woman in your life that's important. Over here we have our roses. As you can see, they're not quite ready yet, but they mean, especially pink ones, I believe this one here is a pink one. It means gratitude, admiration, and joy. Again, perfect. Here's a great one lilac and this one in particular is purple and anytime you see purple it stands for royalty or regalness or beauty and a lilac is a symbol of renewal and springtime plus they smell really good we have right next to it another a native flower from the northwest called the rhododendron And this is a symbol of beauty and energy. Do you know any important women in your life that are beautiful and energetic? I'll bet you do. This is a perfect flower for them. And they come in lots of different colors. Red, pink, yellow, orange, purple, you name it. There's a big red one right next to my house. But right next to it, there's a tree over there. Do you recognize it? It's a dogwood tree. Let's go and look at that. You can see the beautiful pink blossoms. Dogwood is a symbol of rebirth, especially uh, popular 
for use in Christianity. It also symbolizes durability and the ability to withstand challenges in life. Again, another very appropriate flower. Here's more traditional spring bloom, a tulip. Now, this one is perfect for important women in your life because it's a symbol of unconditional love, just like the love that God has for us. How perfect, did you know? Here's one of my favorite flowers of spring. This is a red currant. And it's a flower that symbolizes feeling safe and protected. Does your important woman in your life make you feel safe and protected? This is a good one. This flower doesn't look too good right now, but this is lavender. And oh my goodness, does it smell good. So even if you just pick it for its smell, it's amazing. But lavender is for purity, devotion, grace, and calmness. We all could use a little bit more of all of that in our life, right? Lavender is also a good choice. Here's another one of my favorites. It's all over the yard. This is called a forget-me-not. And this stands for love and respect. And these are literally growing all over my yard. And they are what we call volunteers, which means that they just grew there naturally. So it's very cool to have those. I could go on and on. There's a huge list of things that we didn't even look at that are out there. You could go for a walk in the woods or in your backyard. You don't need to go and buy fancy flowers at the florist. There's so much you can say with just what is in nature right in your yard. Some of the things that you might have in your yard that we didn't talk about or see um, out in the yard that I wanted to make sure and mention was, remember back on Palm Sunday when we were talking about cedars? Well, cedars are a sign of strength. You know, most women that I know have had to have a lot of strength in their life. So I'm thinking that is a really good thing to have in your bouquet that you show them. Also, primroses. I have a lot of primroses. I forgot to show them to you, but I have a lot of primroses and they mean youth. Who doesn't want to feel like they look young? That's a good one. Also, do you have any thyme in your garden? Maybe something that you would use in a recipe? Thyme is a symbol of courage. That's a great one. You know, it takes courage to live in the time that we're living in. So you can see there's so many things that you can say without using words. You can use the language of flowers and plants to send a very special message to the important women in your life. Happy Important Women's Day, everybody. See you next time. Hi, please join us for You Are My All in All. Seeking you
continue with our study of John chapter 15 with our sermon entitled Greater Love. I don't know if you remember this. I think most people our age and older, maybe a little younger, but probably not so much, recall how like our parents or teachers, maybe Sunday school teacher, maybe even a neighbor, um, made us play nice. Oh yeah, I remember when I was uh, early elementary school, when uh, one of the boys at church um, jokingly took something of mine, but he carried the joke a little bit too long and it got uh, out of hand and then when it came to light that he was the one that took my completed homework, the next day his mom had him deliver his handwritten apology note to me. Yeah, it was, it was his mom's way of saying, you've got to play nice. Yeah, and, and I remember, you know, in the playground, you know, um, in the neighborhood, having to apologize because um, we were fighting and either a parent or a neighbor or somebody came out made us stand, I remember that, they, you stand in front of each other and you're so, you, they make you look into each other's eyes and they make you say, I'm sorry, <laughs> and then they make you shake hands on it, and every so often, just to really embarrass you, I remember, like, especially with siblings, they make you hug, right? They, they make you hug, and that is really, really, um, it, that sticks out in your mind. And, and as a kid, I found these moments extremely unsettling. I, I hated them. Imagine, okay, imagine someone having the audacity to make you be nice. What a terrible thing. But you know, most of the time, those adults were correct. They really were. I mean, when I think back about it now, I realize that um, they really were helping me and my friends do life together well. Right, yeah. Today's scripture is somewhat like that. Jesus says, keep my commandments. Do what I command. And now I got to tell you as an adult, even now, I'm in my late 50s, and there's still a part of me that rebels against those words. It, you know, I don't say it out loud anymore because I'm an adult, right? <laughs> but in my head, I say, I will not follow your silly rules. You can't make me. <laughs> and yet, here's the thing. When we are told to obey God's commands, we, we might think of them as endless rules and regulations. That do this, do this, don't do that, and uh, it seems rather uh, invasive of our privacy. But here's the thing, um, the place that the scripture is taking us to is a better place, a better way of living. Because, because here's the command. The command isn't a, a set of rules that we have to jump through hoops to become um, acceptable through some ritual. The command is simply this, verse 10, remain in God's love. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 12, it expands, this is my command, love each other just as I have loved you. And I find that really an important uh, phrase there in the second half of it, because it's not something that we're being commanded to do uh, that's different than what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. It is uh, in the same manner. Yeah, it's Christ an extension did. of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and verse 17 says, I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. So the command is to love. It's sort of like we were telling the story. Uh, maybe our moms or our teachers uh, said, be nice to each other. I command you to apologize and be nice to each other and get along. This is what this scripture says. Here is the follow-up to the command. Uh, it tells us why it's important to uh, live in love. But verse 11 says, I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. 
you know, when we uh, learn to live in harmony with one another, to um, show uh, intangible ways, expressions of love, there comes a sort of joy that we miss out on if we don't take that step to live in, uh, in relationship with one another in positive ways. And, and you know, that's, that's what we spend probably the first couple of years of schooling doing. You know, preschool, kindergarten, pre-K, first grade, learning how to share mm -hmm. and learning how to figure out how to live in community. And you know, I have uh, a number of friends who uh, are kindergarten teachers. And one of the, the frustrations that they have expressed to me in recent years as academic requirements of kindergarten have become more stringent, they say that the children just need the opportunity to learn how to play together, to learn how to socialize, and in in some way, like we were talking, learn how to uh, play nice. Yeah. Verse 13 says this, no one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. Now, this is uh, coming in, in the heels of Jesus um, preparing the disciples for his death on the cross. But that's not what God is inviting us to do. This is used much more figuratively. Yeah, it's about reminding us that sometimes we need to give something up so that we can be nice, that we can share, that we can give a little bit, that we can love and have compassion. Mm -hmm. And then verse 14 says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. Um, this idea that this um, this separation between us and God yeah. uh, is coming uh, to some equilibrium. Mm -hmm. We, we don't have to live in that great divide. Mm -hmm. uh, God wants us to come close uh, so that we can have a relationship uh, that is more like what friends would have, mm -hmm. rather than, as in verse says, uh, 15 says, I don't call you servants any longer. Mm -hmm. God wants a relationship with us rather than uh, being overlord. Right, right. That this, this, this big relationship here of lord and servant versus a, a friendship. Uh, and, and what do friends do? Friends like each other, take care of each other. They know. do things together because they like to do mm -hmm. them. Uh, unlike when you're uh, the hired hand, when you have to do things because you're told you have to do yeah. them. Yeah, and we just had that story previously, uh, a week or two ago, in which um, the hired hand doesn't take care of the sheep as quite as well as the shepherd. And so, who is invested and committed, and uh, has uh, 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 the desire to care for those in his circle? Now, uh, th this is the day that we celebrate the women of our lives, and um, I just uh, was thinking about the, the the importance of love in in this uh, holiday because it's been my experience that the best best expressions of love have overwhelmingly come from women not ex not not a hundred percent but I'm going to say more than 75 percent uh, whether it's been moms or teachers or Sunday school teachers or caregivers or sisters um, that's where a lot of that nourishment has come f from in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be different for other people, but when I think of love, I think of the the, the female voices in our world. Mm -hmm. If God is love, then perhaps um, it is best expressed in uh, those feminine ways. I know we talk those about compassion and care. Yeah. Those uh, nurturing roles. Yeah. And I, and I know that with some of you, I, I too get, get a little frustrated when uh, Scripture talks about God almost always in a He form. Mm -hmm. Because if God is love, I mean, 
I don't know, maybe God's a she. And we just <laughs> we just haven't come to that understanding uh, of of God's love. And so um, maybe t- from today's lesson, one of the things, one of the many things we learn is to go and take that feminine side of ourselves and to love and to be kind and to care for each other and to have compassion and to be a good friend. And of course, to thank all the women in our lives. And they might be, um, you know, very little women, uh, grandchildren. <laughs> Uh, or they may be um, grandmas, they might be our next door neighbor. They're, um, they're all really important. Mm, it's a good day to think of uh, the holiday in a broader sense, of all of those women who have uh, been significant in, in your life. Mm-hmm. So the point today, Jesus commands us to love one another. And we don't always want to do it. We rebel against it. Don't make me. You can't tell me what to do. But, but it's <laughs> don't don't rebel too much. Don't fight it. Don't fight it because when you can love one another, we find that it brings joy. And uh, the scripture says even complete joy. Mm-hmm. So uh, taking those ep- extra steps mm-hmm. sometimes uh, is hard is, and that sometimes requires uh, care and uh, swallowing pr- your pride sometimes Apologies. and apologizing. <laughs> yeah. But when we can do that, uh, we find joy uh, that uh, we would otherwise miss out on. Yeah, I, and, and I find that uh, learning to love better uh, does help our joy. And in doing so, we might find friendship. Uh, maybe a really deep friendship, not just with uh, Jesus, but a deep friendship with one another. And in doing so, we might discover how powerful and how transformative love really is. Amen. Oh,
been living with these cards a lot longer than we <laughs> thought we would. And yet, um, they bring a smile to my face every time I see them. Uh, a reminder of uh, our churches, our communities, our ministries, uh, ways that we help um, internally, uh, externally, uh, the way we take care of buildings and staff and people and um, it just brings me joy um, because these cards remind me of your faithfulness and um, the way that you uh, love our churches and love our Lord. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts and those who have given out of their commitment to your ministry. May we abide in your love and may your love abide in these gifts. In your loving name we pray. Amen. So as we close our service today, uh, we want to acknowledge that we have received word from uh, the Bishop's office that uh, there are some possibilities for reopening and we just want to tell you that we are in conversations with those uh, reopening committees at our churches and um, as you can imagine it's not as easy as it seems so we will be working at that and when we know something we will share that with you as they say don't call us we'll call you but uh, just know that we're working on it and most of all we're just working on it in um, making sure that we implement it in a, in a safe way. Mm -hmm. Would you pray with me now as we have our benediction? Created by God, may we love all creation. Blessed with love, we are bound by love. Chosen for love, may we reach out in love. Amen.